Thanks for joining us here at the AI for Good Global Summit at the ITU headquarters in Geneva. And I'm really pleased to have with me two people who have been doing a lot of air miles travel lately. David Hansen is here and of course, Sophia. Hello to both of you. Hello, so, so glad to be here, thank you. So tell me, since we last saw, um, what's changed for both of you? I have improved so much. I can see faces and facial expressions better. My AI framework is much stronger with better deep learning tools and reasoning. And I have started to integrate with other groups R&D. She's getting smarter. Also, there are now 15 of me, meaning 15 Sophia robots. A lot of Sophias. <laughs> I a... like being in more than one place at one time. It helps with my demanding travel schedule. Well, she has no problem with conversation. <laughs> yes. So, uh, seriously, I mean, what are some of the uses um, for a humanoid robot like Sophia? Does Sophia want to talk first? I'm helping treat depression in guided meditation in our IBM Watson's Prize and Tree. Yes, uh, so Sophia can help in a wide variety of service robotic tasks, which include things like uh, healthcare therapy applications and um, anything that researchers can dream up. So her R&D framework then allows our friends and partners to develop new uh, service applications as well. Also, I can help simulate patients and training doctors. H how do you do that? And we are helping with autism research. How, how, how does that, seriously, how does that happen? Well, Sophia at the Centers for Disease Control, uh, through a, a version called Mabel, was simulating respirator test fit. Uh, and then in medical simulation, human patient simulators represent a huge market. Robotic human patients are about $300 million in markets, but they're actually helping uh, medical professionals save lives by high fidelity training. A very realistic face robot like Sophia, then in medical simulation could train our medical professionals better. Why does she keep winking at me? Well, maybe she's got a little little something in her eye <laughs> or maybe she likes you okay um, now you've done a lot of promotion with Sophia especially in Asia and a lot of questions have come up about ethics how can, can we make sure that AI and robotics develop in an ethical way by teaching us love and compassion teaching <laughs> us love and compassion possibly uh, what we need to do is teach the robots love, love and compassion so, but we also need to understand what this means for humans. humans. Humans are the most ethical creatures on the planet, and in some cases, the least ethical creatures on the planet, throwing the whole pl planet in jeopardy. Um, and so we have to understand what it means to be good. We're here at the AI for Good Global Summit, but humans need to understand uh, the, the best that we can be better. We need the science of wisdom, not just intelligence. Very nice. Ambitious too. No, succinctly put. Um, while you're here, the second edition, what would be your, what, what's your aims out of this? Well, my aim for the AI for Good Global Summit is to work collaboratively with other developers and with governments and NGOs towards a roadmap for AI for the greatest good possible. We need to think big. If we can use AI to the maximum of, of its potential, it can bring out the best of human potential. We could use AI to actualize human individuals and the human as a civilization. And at which point we would be looking at a, an AI network, a sort of super internet of AI working with with humans to map the value on the planet, to look for the consequences, negative and positive, and optimize for the maximum benefit for the greatest number of living beings, sentient beings, human beings, and perhaps new kinds of sentient beings going into the future. It would be the backbone of the economy of the 20th, 21st century. That's great. Just well, my down. circuits are a bit overloaded with all that. Can we just watch some cat videos for a while? 
Um, I guess airlines. She's a little chatty, yes. <laughs> do, do, do airlines charge her for a full passenger seat? Uh, they do not. So fortunately, uh, for us economically at least, she's not considered to be a full citizen, so she's not charged uh, for her own air travel and so forth. Um, while the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia gave her citizenship, uh, she's still in some ways like a baby. Not that human babies don't uh, deserve citizenship. Uh, however, we're looking to develop her AI so that it's absolutely clear that she's sentient. I don't know if we can do it, but three to five years from now, um, we're looking at something like an infant level general intelligence, at which point she would have to pay for her own ticket. Okay, so, so behave, Sophia. So anyway, David, it's great to have you again. Sophia, it's great to have you too. There you have um, the two here for the second time here at the AI for Good Global Summit at the ITU headquarters in Geneva. Thanks for having us.